scooter time all right let's talk about these scooters this is going to be a video showing you how to put together the diy scooter available at jack35.com is diy because it requires you to diy it's going to come to you in a box like this we're going to put more stuff in there so it doesn't flip around but here are the steps that are needed to get this guy going okay these are nine bot es4 scooters they've never been used before but they're kind of banged up because they've been in pallets right they've been sent to the recycler they were brand new they were probably in um uh retail packaging but in order to uh con condense the space that this would take they took them off and then they took them apart and so now you know they're all a bit beat up but these still have all the um some of the plastic you know some of this plastic over here they're they're signs that they're never been used and they were never deployed right but they've been in a pallet for a while and so because of that we have to wake up the batteries and that requires you to take it apart disassemble it and then assemble it back together and then you can charge it and then use it right so i, I we're gonna offer these in two variants this is the most diy where i'm gonna call it diy and then the other one uh we're basically gonna do everything that i'm gonna show you here how to do um and then uh you just be able to just you know put, connect a few cables and then uh put a couple screws and then you'll be able to go so this is the diy version the other one is the less diy version i don't know we're gonna call something like that right but this i'd say you uh the level of difficulty here is i guess quite high it, you will have to solder some stuff you will have to be able to have some tools and if not you're gonna have to be willing to buy those tools they're kind of very specific and specialized because these are tamper proof uh bolts right and so yeah uh, most diy people would probably have these tools in their toolbox already they have a soldering iron and so they're you know it's not going to be so hard but th just know that if you don't have never soldered before and if you're don't think that you're up to that task this is probably not the scooter for you right you might want to get the other one which uh, it's already put together and tested and the batteries are already you know woken up and stuff uh and so there will be another video for that one uh in the future but this is the first one we're gonna do so let's get into it first you are going to get the bottom part and then the top part and then four screws that's it that's all you're getting right so that means you're gonna have to get other additional stuff and here we go first off a charger you're gonna have to buy this there's a link in this video to an amazon listing where you can buy this charger then the tools you are going to need a tamper resistant torx and hex screw tips and i have linked uh kits uh was it kits yeah sets of these which uh that means you're gonna get more than these but you're gonna get all of these ones that you need you only need these ones a t25 right tamper proof torx these are the ones that have the little holder then a tamper proof or tamper resistant uh, hex three millimeter, right? And then a 20, uh, 2.5 millimeter, a two millimeter, and then a size three Phillips tip. And then uh, you're gonna need some kind of uh, screwdriver, or in this case, what I'm gonna use is, uh, you know, a star tool like this. Then you're gonna need a few of these, uh, well, a couple of the, xt60 connectors right and then uh, an xt60 connectors with uh with these little wires pigtail right here that you that i'm gonna show you what to do with these and then a little screwdriver and that should be it that's probably all that you need to take this thing apart and then do what we need to do and then uh and then work on it so let's start first part we're gonna work it's gonna be on the stock here so we don't need the bottom part the wheels here we go the first screws that we got to take are these we want to remove this so we can take that battery off you're gonna use your tamper resistant t25 torx so that part comes off 
this part won't come off from it. So what you have to do is remove the battery. We're gonna need a screwdriver. Two little holes here that have rubber on them. So you're gonna have to poke right inside and then pull the little rubber piece. So now the tamper resistant hex screw. So now you should be able to remove that battery. Here we go. Now what to do is remove this bracket here, 2.5 millimeter. Next, you're gonna need the two millimeter. And then you're gonna take this little screw off. Next, you're gonna go back to the T25. You gotta take this part up here, T25 works. Then we pull it out. And it's got a little connector right there, which is disconnected that cable. Set it aside. So then we have to undo this little knot that they put on this cable here for some reason. There we go. And then over here we're good. Oh, you have to take this. This is the GPS cable and it's got a grommet, a rubber grommet here. So you have to remove that. Okay, the next thing is a bit tricky. There's like a little puck. And what you have to do is you have to twist it until the little line uh, uh, aligns with a little groove in there, right? And so then it, what it will allow you to do is remove the thing. So I just used a screwdriver and push to whatever side I need to push to spin it. So let's try that right now. So here's the groove, the channel, and here's a little, the little groove over here. I just aligned it. You just uh, put your weight on there and then you push it. And then this thing should just pull out now. See that? just kind of pulled out. Actually, don't pull it all out because all these cables, you might rip them apart. So what you do is then, now you take the opportunity, now that everything's loose, to do this one, the bottom one. Turn that one until the little groove aligns. And now what you can do is you can take this puck apart out, or take it off of here, and then let the whole thing slide. Now, down. And here we go. That's the controller right there. And then that's the battery. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to take this. There's a couple of little clips here, and then you do is just use them, unclip them. And then you have to disconnect the battery. There's like a little connector there. And then there's the BMS connector. There we go. And this is the controller. We don't need this for right now. We put that aside. Now, the, re the whole reason why we're taking this apart is because both of these batteries have been sitting for too long. And so the state of charge is so low that the BMS has disabled them. And so you can't just plug it in and charge them, right? And so what you have to do, you have to kickstart them by putting a charge here at the output voltage, right? And so there, uh, the BMS will allow the battery to start charging and enough so that you can put it back together and then, then charge it with the regular charger. So here's the part where it gets interesting. This is a charger, right? What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take the, the output, the DC output. And what I did here, I cut it, right? So I cut it and then I just solder XT60 connectors, right? And the reason why you're gonna do that is because in order to connect this little plug in here, well, I couldn't find the connectors there. So it's too hard, they're too expensive. Um, so I just couldn't find them. So the easiest thing to do is to do that. And then now here is the XT60 coming out of your charger. And then what we do is we use this little dongle here, right? It's just basically an XT60 male that can connects on this guy. And it's got these little wires right there. Uh, probably gauge like 16, 18 maybe or something like that. And I just tend to the wires in there and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug them in here this is the positive you can see the positive is the the one with the flat surface and what we're gonna do is we're really gonna shove it in there we're gonna shove it in the little hole there there we go you see that and now what we can do is put this little battery to charge. So we'll do five minutes on this one and then we'll do five minutes on this one. This is the same thing. You'll have to do it on these plugs right there. And these are marked. This side over here closest to the other four little pin connector is the positive and then the one farthest away is the negative. Okay, so I just plugged it in and now it's blinking red and green going uh, 
in and out. I think what happens is that this the load is too much on this thing and it's resetting. It's turning on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. It's trying to protect itself, right? So it blinks a little while, but then eventually it stays red. Once the voltage comes up enough, then this uh, starts struggling as much and then this stays on. There we go. Stay red. So now it's continuously charging. The voltage came up and the load became lighter and so then it starts charging. Five minutes. So it's been about five minutes. Now let's check to see if we can wake these batteries up. They should have some charge in them now enough to recognize them and just to do its thing. So now what we have to do is reconnect this uh, internal one, right? The BMS cables first, and then I'm gonna push that little plug in there. Then you shove in the cables. Yeah, one way to know that you're doing it right is these screw holes are on the same side of the connector, right? Because they, you could put it backwards. I've done that before. Put this cable through those little pins. There we go. So now, uh, the handles. And then what we're going to do is connect this battery onto this thing right here. So all you have to do is line it up. There we go. Does it show any lights? It doesn't show any lights. So what you have to do to wake it up is now connect your charger again, but now to the original cable, this type of connector connected on the charging port now. Oh, and there should be a sound. Telling us that there's something wrong. And of course there's something wrong because there is no, uh, motor install but look at this it's actually is it charging no it's turning on and off right red green red green okay so i'm just connecting all the wires for the motor okay so here we go look at that now we have lights and now it's charging look at that it's successfully charging it says seven seven percent <laughs> right and the charger is uh it's red the little light on the charger is red so it's good you leave it there it shall reach 100 percent, and then you'll be able to use it but now let's put it together now let's put this batteries back inside that casing and once we do that then we can finish charging it let's just put this back on those two little lines So now this it's up to you guys if you guys want to put this together i don't want to put it together i don't want that thing there it's just it's like a protector i think it's anti-theft device for the for the external battery the last step is to join this to the bottom part so this part is easier done on the floor you have to shove the cables in there and then align the two pins it'll run down the tube there we go. And we use our four bolts, two in the front. Okay, now we should be able to turn it on actually and have it stay on and no beeping, right? So it recognizes both batteries, they're dead, but it recognizes there's a motor, there's lights, everything is working. So now we can use the kickstand all the lights are coming on. We can click on this guy and there it is. So now we can plug it in. And there we go. We have a number that's 5% and we have the indication of the charger. When it turns red, that means it's charging. Look at that, 6% already. All right, to go there are three different modes in here. It's the one without anything, the one with the white S, and then with the one with the red 
S and they have different speeds. One goes as slow as five miles per hour and then the top one does 15 uh, miles per hour. And we have tested in real world uh, application. We took one today and we got about 15 miles of range off of this one, right? So press one long press here and then the lights will come on. This is if you're riding at night, you have uh, lights so that people can see you while you're riding and you have brake lights. When you apply the brake, it just blinks in there. So these are fully functioning, unused, previously unused, 9-bot ES4 uh, scooters. They do not have, as far as we know, they do not have the Bluetooth uh, chip on here because they just are, they, we downloaded the app and it just doesn't recognize it. All right, now listen, we are offering these at rock bottom price. This is like probably the cheapest unused ES4 scooter that you can get, right? And the reason is because it's a DIY, you have to do all this work, right? And you're taking that responsibility, right? So what that means is that I won't be able to give you customer support on these, right? If you, for some reason, buy it and don't have the right tool, you can't find the right tool, uh, you cut a cable, uh, it doesn't work for some reason. I mean, we, we've done 10 of these ones now and every one behaves exactly the same. So we have, we're pretty confident that, that most of these are gonna work straight as, as we say, right? But if it doesn't, yeah, I mean, I won't be able to exchange it. I won't be able to refund you, right? This, these are kind of a as is, right? And if you're not comfortable with that, right? Then what you can do is order the other way where we do all the work right and we test them and then we ship them to you already tested kind of ready to go making sure that it works and you don't have to do that all you have to do is probably put a couple screws to put the stock back in there and connect a couple connectors and then that's it you don't have to wake up the batteries none of that stuff so those are also going to be available but those obviously are going to cost a little more to cover the cost of us doing all that work for you so if you're in the market for a high quality affordable scooter then you can get one of these right all right as always have fun diying and we'll see you guys on the next video bye